straight into the list with number 10. I like your suit better, dude. I, I don't All know. right, number, number 10 on the list, Fear Agent number one. Uh, this is the Rick Remender Classic, and it is in development uh, by... Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. Copies of this book are about $20 on eBay. Uh, this was my selection. Uh, I like it at the $20 price point uh, for those who are a big believer in uh, this TV spec. There is a black and white uh, variant cover that uh, you can't find real cheap these days. Uh, but the A cover is dirt cheap and it makes sense to me. Yeah, that uh, variant cover is pretty sick. I think Tony Moore did it. And uh, what I like about this book is, is it's inspired by uh, EC Comics, you know. So yeah, I'm really interested to see it, um, you know, on film. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're done with the script. Good stuff. Cool. Moving right along. So. Number nine, right. Yo, Edge of Spider-Verse, number two. Comic fan, the Greg, Edge of Spider-Verse 2. The Greg Land variant. Uh, we can blame the mighty Mel V for uh, this book being on the top ten list, uh, but it makes a lot of sense. Uh, we've seen incredible moves for the uh, DeJuravec Ultimate Fallout 4 variant. Uh, does somebody want to talk to us a little bit about why the Edge of Spider-Verse 2 land variant makes sense? Yeah, I mean, if you're tr if you're uh, plotting on the same trajectory as the 1 in 25 for Ultimate 4, Ultimate Fallout 4, then it makes sense that this book is undervalued. Um, uh, the bet here is, is that this thing really goes parabolic, right? Um, um, you know, if, if you think about um, uh, Ghost Spider and Miles, they go hand in hand this book should catch up at some point um it's probably um even more scarce than the ultimate fallout force um and uh and and hasn't really kept up at this point even though um you know some of the um of the first prints in the cover a's um are right on the heels of, of ultimate fallout fours cover a's this has a little ways to catch up to the uh the one in 25. Um, so maybe room to run, uh, but this is a big boy book if you're going to be putting money down on this. It uh, looks like we have the uh, Mexico version cover. No, nah, it's okay. Whatever. Everybody knows it. I'm not worried about it. If I could. Right. That's the only one I can afford. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's all I can afford. And, and we're not suggesting that you buy the Mexican version. No. Sorry to all of our international uh, comic collectors. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Uh, new X-Men number 140. Four? Five. 145. Uh, five. 145. I apologize. Uh, ben, I think this was your pick. This was my pick. Um, I, I, so, you know, Chris Evans has been uh, linked to coming back to the MCU to do a few projects. One of those projects is to introduce Wolverine, go back in time, and have a story where, 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 where they cross paths. This book is super important because... Um, Captain America is identified as Weapon One in this book, which is part of the Weapon X program, or the Weapon Plus program, if you will. Um, so, um, you know, that really sort of changes everything we know about the two characters and makes it super relevant. What's interesting about this book is, in this time period, there were no variants for this that I'm aware of. Um, there weren't any late printings, um, but there is a newsstand. Right, so if if I'm out there looking for this book, I'm looking for the newsstands in in this particular um, in this particular one. This is also linked to the Weapon Plus series that came out as well, uh, that tells the story of Captain America and Wolverine. That's sort of a follow up book to this, um, but uh, I, I think this one is really cheap spec. And if you find it in a newsstand, grab it and don't tell anyone. Tuck it away because I think that's a home run. Yeah. Now, Ben, uh, for those who would be critical of this pick, like they are of many of my uh, spec picks, suggesting, uh, you know, nobody cares about story spec. I don't know why you like that stuff so much. Um, 
what's the response? Why is this so uh, important as we look to Marvel uh, TV and the forthcoming introduction of the mutants into the MCU? Yeah, I, I think it really sort of sets the stage for how Marvel's going to sort of transition from the Cap era into Wolverine, right? Story spec, I think, can be really powerful. And this, you know, made us, every all the readers rethink how we knew Captain America. The best thing Marvel can do, in my opinion, is tie Wolverine to Captain America for, for, for their movies and television, right? I don't think there's anything more um, profitable for them to do that. And this book right here is the one that ties that all together. So I think it's a layup. Um, and, um, and it's not a book that you're going to have to ch uh, throw a ton of money at right now. Um, but I think it has a long way to go. Good stuff. Number seven, ball and chain number one. Um, so I, I like this book particularly because, uh, Emily Blunt and the rock are attached to the project. It's a good read for those who are unfamiliar with the storyline. Uh, basically, we have, uh, I don't want to run the whole thing, um, but uh, they tell sort of like uh, a superhero romantic comedy that works. Um, the hook is that uh, these two need to be together for their powers to work, <laughs> and uh, they don't get along so well. So I I'm really excited about this one. It's a $10 buy right now on eBay. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, unfortunately, it may take a long time for that project to get made, or it may be made, you know, uh, within the next year or two, who knows. Uh, but if I've learned anything from the Black Adam, it's that when uh, Dwayne Johnson gets attached to a project, he makes sure that it happens. Uh, Emily Blunt is, by all accounts, uh, an A-list celebrity and has rabid fans, uh, just like The Rock. I, I think this book makes sense to me. I think it's super adaptable, um, you know, for, for a TV type show. I, I think it could be be a huge home run. And it's sort of one of those tongue in cheek pokes at um, superheroes um, with a unique twist. Um, yeah, it seems like a layup. All right, what's next? What if number 47 uh, is someone going to be kind enough to talk a little bit about this book, Jessup? Uh, best cover I've ever seen. Um, as far as what if big, what if books go, um, tying into the Loki series, um, I got nothing. I'm sorry. Fair enough. Aye. So Sleepy, who's no longer <laughs> with us, was kind enough to educate the panel. He indicated that uh, really the impetus behind um, this book is uh, it was an early what if uh, plot that they thought was going to be, um, you know, animated. And now it's kind of a, a double bang for your buck when uh, you've got the forthcoming Loki series. People love the uh, cover art, which looks like it should appear on a 1970s van. And I, I think you can still find these books relatively cheap and in back issue bins. Uh, look for high grade copies. They're not going to be well cared for by issue number 47. Yeah, the dark cover gets beat up on this one particularly badly. Let me tell you why I, I voted it a little aggressive. Um, it just kind of brought back the Kate storyline um, a few mm. issues back um, when. Um, uh, his uh, Thor's hammer goes onto Earth, and a civilian finds the hammer, and he turns into a new Thor. Um, I can't remember, recall his name offhand, but uh, which I'll remember in a second. But yeah, it, it brought me back to that storyline, and when I saw this, it kind of reminded me of that, and I like that storyline, so I voted aggressive on this one. Plus, the cover is sick. Cool. Makes sense to me. That's my girlfriend. Hi, <laughs> right, buddy. This is your book. Yeah, this is uh, uh, Strange Tales number um, one twenty six. Um, this is a, I mean, this is a very attainable uh, moderate key, which has the potential to be a major key. 
uh, cover art by the great Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko and a Stanley story. This is, uh, you have your first cover and reveal plus in the guts appearance of Dormammu, which, you know, anybody who's seen MCU movies knows or reads uh, Marvel comic books. But this, the potential with this one is because it's in story first appearance of Clea, which Clea is actually down the line is the love interest of uh, Doctor Strange. Um, due to WandaVision, what's everything that's going on with WandaVision? Um, some rumors came up, possibly the blonde haired lady that was in episode two. Some people, um, on blogs and whatnot in, in comic circles are thinking maybe she's Clea. I mm. highly that's a reach to me, but long story short, I think Strange is going to be here for a while along with Voodoo, and they're going to do their thing. And I think eventually the MCU is going to get smart, going to put a uh, Cumberbatch with. A uh, love interest, it which or should be Clea, in which it would be good to have this book on hand at that. Cool, great, great analysis there. Number four, brother Steve, talk to us about Marvel Boy. Sure. So this came up uh, a couple weeks ago when I was reading uh, Secret Invasion, and one you know one of my takeaways. Uh, from that was, you know, who were the, you know, key characters in that miniseries, and 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 Marvel Boy played played a big role, and and then I also remembered, uh, you know, two years ago when uh, there was a new Guardians of the Galaxy series, as there needs to be every year, right? Uh, a new number one, and in the shadows, I think Marvel Boy was there, and and this book, you know, really popped, and. Uh, now, now it's come back down to earth. Um, but if you think about the MCU and Secret Invasion, um, you know he could be a player there. Um, he was also a member of uh, of the Dark Avengers, you know, which you know has been a past uh, rumor, and it's always easier to rehash uh, old rumors than come up with new new things uh, among the community that does that, right? Um, <laughs> He's also been a member of the Young Avengers, and uh, you know, apparently a love interest of um, of uh, our girl Kate Bishop. Uh, so th there's just a lot of plays on this. Oh, sure. um, and then um, there's also a variant, a 4K print run Dynamic Forces variant. Uh, so that's also attractive. Also, this was a character developed by Grant Morrison, and when Grant Morrison develops characters, uh, you know, the, you tend to see them, uh, you know, used. You know, the, I mean, first thing that comes to mind is, you know, Damian Wayne, for example. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, room, and there, I, I would guess there's, I would imagine there's a newsstand of this as well, but I haven't researched that. It, it's got to be out there, right? I've never found it, but it, it very well may be. It, it, um, you know, this is an era where, where newsstands were starting to get really hard to come by, um, but there certainly may be. Cool. We got uh, number three. This is my uh, this is my pick, not my pick, but this is the pick that it's going to be. I wish it was higher. Bang, bang. Right. Uh, I tried to buy Phil's copy, but I didn't have enough money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I was legitimately, viscerally angry. I was like, God damn it, now I'll never get a copy of this book at a reasonable <laughs> price. Uh, but the reality is uh, people are already in the know. Sentai number two, uh, the first appearance of the Power Rangers, basically, in comics. Uh, guys, can a couple of you talk about why this book that's already uh, a big dollar book has a high probability that it's got a, a ways to go? Sure. Well, I'll, I'll just quickly um, add that, um, you know, I, I sell a ton of Power Rangers comics. I don't know anything about Power Rangers. I, I'm too old to, 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 to know that. Uh, but, uh, I mean, they, Power Rangers fans are, are loyal. And you see things from the 90s, you know, like Pokemon cards and Magic the Gathering cards and um and then Nico, you and I are, you know, always 
going, okay, what's the 90s equivalent to G.I. Joe, He-Man, Transformers? You know, Power Rangers has got to be the 90s franchise, right? Um, so that that's my take on the book. But I know some other people are more familiar with the Power Rangers than I. Phil, you saw this one coming. Uh, yeah. And unlike me, we're smart enough to buy. Uh, talk to us about what you saw and, and why you saw it. I mean, everyone's looking for the next Star Wars, you know, so um, I run a toy shop as well. So I sell a bunch of Power Rangers figures along with Transformers and Star Wars and Transformers, right? So, and um, I just knew how rare this one was. Mm -hmm. uh, it's super hard to get in high grade. They're usually banged up. The car stock isn't that great. Um so there i saw a big opportunity to buy this book um i was able to get a few copies uh but key collector did make an uh, alert that one sold for 500 something dollars in raw condition um and uh, i'm just looking here really quickly too on uh, the last 90 days on ebay the we've had 3300 power rangers comics that have sold so um, it's a far cry from some of the other stronger properties, but I mean, there's a serious demand here, and the variants, um, you know, they've been pretty solid plays on New Comic Book Day, certain ones, you know. So I think people like that Boom series a lot. I don't personally read it, but it seems to be doing really well, um, and people who love it, like it love it. Um, you know, this book is not easy to come by. You don't need a huge huge audience to dry, have this thing go crazy right and that just opens up a little bit and forget it it's gone you're never going to see it again so yeah they're rebooting the movie franchise talking about uh some kind of shared power rangers universe and uh if you're like me and you were just a little too old for power rangers uh, don't make the mistake of watching the awesome power rangers fan film on youtube with uh the guy from Dawson's Creek in it, because if you do, then you'll be thinking about, well, maybe I should try to spend twenty five hundred dollars and, and pick up a nine six of Sentai number two uh, on eBay. Uh, Just one it, thing. Yeah, because it's awesome, and uh, so is this book. Good stuff, guys. What's yeah, you know, two? let me let me add let me add one more thing. It's I think this is perfect timing for this book. Um, spoiler alert. I don't know if uh, I'm right or not, but there's heavy speculation that uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue four, which comes out in about two weeks, should reveal who the Green Ranger is. The one in 100 Derek Chu has half of the Green Ranger's face. I would definitely keep your eye out for that one. Great pick. Good stuff. Oh, boy. All right. So here we've got arguably... Um, the first full appearance of Riri Williams. Um, we get her face on this second print here, which makes it attractive. Uh, this book had uh, around 6,000, 6,500 copies ordered by retailers. Um, so issue nine, the big book, um, and I'm going to sort of challenge it a little bit here. The big book is the uh, the Age of Apocalypse um, variant. Um and, uh, you know, they estimate that that's probably about 20% of that first print run. Um, this book, by all estimation, is, 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 is as rare, if not more rare than that. Currently on the census, um, there's half as many in any grade of uh, this second print than there is of that um, Age of Apocalypse variant. variant. Um, um, Listen, I don't think there's better spec right now than Riri Williams. Uh, she's getting her own show next year, really two, her own show, and she's heavily featured at Armor Wars, which follows it up immediately. Um, she's going to be a big, big star in the MCU. And this, the buy-in for this book is pretty cheap. I just picked one up um, this week um, for less than 50 bucks. Um, uh, you know, I, I think from an ROI perspective, this book is absolutely massive um, and you don't have to put out a lot of money and you're not taking a lot of risk. Like, is she coming? Is she not? She's got her own TV show coming. She's going to be a major Marvel star. Um, super psyched about this one. Uh, for me, it seems like a layup given where the buy-in is right now. Yeah. So for those listening in podcast form, that's Invincible Iron Man number nine, second print. 
and to the top book of the week. All right, so this is Invincible Iron Man 7 third print, the companion book to the book we just talked about. Um, uh, this is her first appearance. Um, it's hard to argue that. She's featured uh, on multiple panels on um, on the final page of the book. Um, she's at MIT working on Iron Man armor. Um, this third print is attractive because she, um, they dropped her face there on the cover. The buy-in for this book is half the price of the one we just talked about. You can pick yeah, these up for $20. What's it say there, five. Ben? What's it say around her head? Or around her head? It says, in, uh, introducing uh, Riri Williams. So it basically says, this is her, right? This is the first time we see her. The other bubbles on the other follow-up books say featuring Riri Williams, I believe. This one says, you know, introducing Riri Williams. Or the first appearance of, even, actually, it may say in there. The first appearance of Riri Williams. So It definitely says first appearance of Riri Williams. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, the print run on this thing is also in that same name. I, yeah, I can't read it on the screen. In the same neighborhood of that sort of sixty-five to sixty-five hundred range. Um, um, this book, it, to me, I look at this. I'm thinking, I, I can't believe you can you can get it at these prices. Um, um, from an ROI perspective, I can't think of many books where you you can you can uh, make as much as you can on this one. I would be grabbing this, um, grabbing these up now because I think in. In six months, you're going to be looking back on these prices and thinking, why the hell didn't I buy a couple more? Um, so a real smart play um, for a character that I think is going to be super popular. Okay, so for yeah, that's those it. who are not great pick, but... real familiar, tell me again, uh, why precisely do you think Riri Williams is the character that people should be focusing on uh, for most bang for their buck right now? Yeah, so she, you know, we all like Miles, right? We know he's going to be huge, but he is he is a ways away from happening within the MCU, right? We're going to get a 10 to 12 year run with this character. She's going to slot in and effectively fill the Iron Man role um, um, within the MCU. Um, um, the That's a great point. Books, great point. Um, the buy-in on these books is not expensive, right? If we're talking about two, three hundred dollars, it's a different conversation. Right now, we're talking about. I just picked up one of these literally this week for twenty-five and forty-five for the one for, for, for issue number nine. These are very accessible for most collectors, and people should be adding them to their collections right now because I think these are going to go the way of Ultimate Fallout Four in the next twelve to eighteen months. Good stuff, guys. Uh, great list this week. I really appreciate everyone's efforts. Uh, we'll be back next week. Thank you all.